Today is the day that Brazilians will be waiting to see where the main man, that's the king of football, that is Pelé, will be buried. Well, we just hope that he's so continue to rest in perfect peace. Starting the show, 360 Sport on Trust TV. I am Adeni Aji Shafe. Lots to talk about, but we quickly start with uh, Pelé. FIFA will ask members to name a stadium after him, according to Gianni Infantino. President of FIFA, according to him, they will be asking FIFA member countries to see how they can make at least the name of Pelé to be at least memorable for life, where all countries have this man's name, although it's going to be member countries. And right now, that will be the first to be looking at. Pelé died on Thursday, and it will be buried today uh, over there in Brazil. I have in the studio Suleiman Shwaibo is here to talk sports with me. Good to have you, Shwaibo. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be here on 360 Sports. Can't wait to get into everything. Good one there. Well, Pelé is going home today, and the Brazilians have been paying their last respect to him. In fact, all across the globe. But right now, according to FIFA, they will be asking member countries to see how they can name a stadium after the king of football. Um, so first of all, you look at Pelé's story, you look at when I started watching football, it was Messi, Ronaldo coming up, but every single person had a unanimous decision that Pelé was the greatest of all time. Look at how much tra trauma he had to go through as a kid. The fact that he lost his best friend, the fact that he had this responsibility on his shoulders to deliver a World Cup to Brazil. So you look at how much adversity he had to overcome, but I must say that this thing is one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard in my life. The fact that you're asking now, the question is, are they requesting or are they demanding? If they are demanding, I don't think they're in a position to tell us what to do do with our stadiums because we also have, have, have iconic figures in Nigeria, we have iconic figures around the world. So who are you to tell them that they shouldn't name their stadiums around the iconic figures? And what I think FIFA is doing is actually selfish and insensitive because there were so many negative reactions about this on social media and WhatsApp. And what I'm saying is that at least allow his family to mourn. At least allow his family to come to terms with the fact that he's no more, come to terms with the demise of Pele, rather than putting this out there and having so many negative reactions towards the family when we are looking at the burial ceremony. Honestly, it was just absurd, one of the most bizarre things I've heard in my life. Well, from the way it is, uh, well, it's not going to be a compulsory. If you just want to do that, you do it, and if you don't want to. But FIFA will be trying to see how they can make the name of Pelé to ring uh, across the whole globe. Well, well, the man is gone now. At the age of 82, he played football at his best. At the age of 17, he conquered the world. And he was doing it three times, winning the World Cup. And a lot of people are like, wow, this man really is the king of football before the likes of uh, Maradona, Messi, Cristiano, and the others you want to mention added more spies to it. But really, Edson Arante do Nascimento, the fact that really deserved to be given a lot of accolades for what he did in the world of football, going around humanitarian wise. And also remember what he did by coming to Nigeria, playing twice in Nigeria against the Nigeria best 11 and also the Midwestern best 11. That history will never be erased for the fact that he came to Nigeria during civil war to at least add his own voice to bring peace to this country. And to let you, to actually remind you, Pelé also actually foresaw Nigeria doing well in football, even though that has never happened. After the 1996 Atlanta Olympics, he was thinking, well, Africans should be ready to win the World Cup, which will happen one day. Now, Morocco has finally broken that jeans, getting to the semi-final of the Mundial. And we are waiting to see which country in the world will be the first, or rather in Africa, to be the first country to win the World Cup. Well, maybe by that time, the dream of Pelé will be coming to pass. Well, according to FIFA president, we are going to ask every country in the world to name one of their football stadiums with the name of Pelé, asking. Well, they are just not saying they are demanding. And even if you look at sports, mm. there are five people that come to your mind when you look at iconic sport figure. You look at Muhammad Ali, you look at Pelé, you look at Michael Jordan, you look at Cristiano Ronaldo, you look at Lionel Messi. For me, those five names will be immortalized in sport. I think they are certain people that are on the fringe, people like Usain Bolt and Serena Williams. But how do you go on from here? Do you then not say, unfortunately, when Messi's demise comes, you say you name a stadium after Messi, when Ronaldo's demise comes, for me, I just feel it cannot be a consistent move. The nations that want to respect him, they should respect him, but you shouldn't ask, you shouldn't make this request at this sensitive period. Well, a lot of uh, issues here and there concerning that. Well, coming from FIFA. But right now, we move away from that particular story, although Pelé will be going home today. And hopefully, 
uh, does the family can bear that particular loss there. Now we talk about NBA matches were played. A lot of games were played in the NBA, and for the main man of the of this time, talking about LeBron James, despite the fact that his club have not been too uh, outstanding so far this season, he was able to pick a lot for the three points for himself and for his club on his birthday. Well, we talk about this. Let's look at the result of the NBA games were played, and we look at. Uh, uh, Tor Toronto Raptors, uh, we have uh, uh, Indiana Pacers lose, uh, winning that game against Toronto Raptors, 114 to 122. New Orleans Pelicans, 111, that is 111. They lost that game against Philadelphia, 76ers, 120. Klimba Cavaliers, they were able to win 145. Nine points are drifts against Chicago Bulls. Uh, the Bulls went to sleep. LA Lakers, I mentioned it earlier. LeBron, the King James, 121 against Charlotte Hornet, well, against them, they have 115 there and they Brooklyn net the real team of this season so far the 129 just and take it away remember the man called Durant 103 against San Antonio Spurs Denver Nuggets of Colorado also scored 111 against Minnesota Timberwolves who actually got 124 and hosting Rocket with their Rocket they couldn't bring down Mavericks the Lala's Mavericks did well 111 against 106 five point difference and you have Detroit Pistons with they are Pistons, Portland Trail Blazers trade them down 135 against 106. Why Atlanta Hawks? The Hawks, they flew high, but the Golden State Warriors show why they are Warriors. It was 143 against 141 there. And LA Clippers, their wings were clipped by Miami Heat. <laughs> With the Heat coming from Miami, uh, actually clipping the wings of the LA Clippers in those games there. Giving you result of the NBA. A lot of games were played, about 10 of them, and we just give you result there. But the highlight of the fact that LA Lakers, uh, you look at LeBron. Uh, you know, that team, so far, this is, they've not been performing so well. But LeBron James came so conquered for a three-point for a man uh, who really have done so well when it comes to this particular sport. Okay, so first of all, this is what is truly incredible about LeBron James. Now, mm. look at LeBron James. This is his 20th season in the NBA. There are 10 players that have done this in the past. Out of those 10 players, only four players have managed to have it. 10 points plus. Now, if you look at those four players, you look at Karim did it, he averaged 10 points. You look at Dirk did it, he averaged 12 points. Then the person that stands out before LeBron is um, Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant averaged 17 points and he was on 35% shooting. Now, all LeBron James is doing, LeBron James is on 25 points, five um, assists, and five rebounds. There are only close to seven guys in the league that are on that level. So, you look at the greatness of this guy, no matter how much you emphasize, no matter how much you elaborate, there aren't words that can justify the greatness of this man. To do this at your 20th season, you look at so many players that have come and gone in the past. How many people have realistically been in the conversation for top 10 greatest basketball players for a season at their 20th season? It's actually unrealistic. But when you look at LeBron, he has always defied the odds. He has always done things that looked very, very unfeasible. So for me, that's why he's one of the greatest for sure. Well, really, Los Angeles Lakers, he just have that man to turn. He has been fantastic for them. 20 years in the NBA, and he's still as hot as uh, he used to be when he was even very, very young. Good one for King LeBron, the one they call James, uh, scoring for the three point on his birthday. And really, he did well, having a lot of rebounds there and making a 62 percent in performance in total. Good one for him, and just can't take him away from being among the greatest when it comes to the slam and dunk sport of. Uh, basketball. He has done so well that he's been at least uh, compared uh, alongside Michael D. Jordan. Uh, it has been a fantastic performance for LeBron James and really you can't take that away. And for the NBA, Golden State Warriors, we are going back to the resort now and talking about other teams. They really uh, done well, Golden State Warriors. But I look at Brooklyn Net this season. Mm. Uh, they seem to be having a real uh, good time uh, bamboozling almost all the teams they've been meeting. Okay, so when you look at um, Brooklyn Nets, we've always talked about that the thing that can spearhead Brooklyn Nets to actually top the Eastern Conference is the relationship and the chemistry, the cohesion between Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. And there have been so much comprising. Now, you look at Steph Curry. He went on the JJ Reddick podcast, I think, last year, late last year, and he said that he saw LeBron James and Kyrie Irving play at a level that he had never really seen before. So if Kevin Durant can actually manifest that and Kyrie Irving can manifest that, and we see that relationship prosper and go to the point where they win themselves the championship, because I believe it's possible. So <laughs> they are a very, very scary prospect because they are probably one of the most nightmarish attackers the game has ever seen, and one of the greatest ball handlers in Kyrie Irving the game has ever seen. 
But the person that really stole the headlines this weekend, the person that stole every single thing, has to go to Donovan Mitchell. 71 points. I know the game went to overtime. But when you look at the greatness in basketball, we've had Will Chamberlain in the 1950s score 100 points. We had Kobe Bryant, I think, in 2005 score 81 points. And this has to be the third best point we've ever seen um, registered in the game. We have Devin Booker going after that with 70 points. But when you look at what this guy has done, 71 points, I know he had 25 feet throws. But to get to that level of greatness, that level of success where you are scoring 71 points, truly incredible. One of the most astonishing stories that happened this weekend. Engrained his name in greatness for sure. If you are to pick between, let me just digress a bit. If you are to pick between Chamberlain, Will Chamberlain, and maybe Luca Doncic, I'm not putting Michael Jordan or LeBron now. I'm putting, talking about the points now. Chamberlain, Doncic, who you pick? Okay, that, that, that's a very interesting <laughs> question. Because when you look at the trajectory oh of Luka goodness. Doncic, he has a lot to achieve. I don't really see him surpassing Will Chamberlain. But one of the problems, one of the things that people use against Will Chamberlain is that he played in the era of Will Russell. Mm. Will Russell had 11 rings. Will Chamberlain ended up having three rings. Some people are saying that that was your biggest competition and you could never overcome them and Will Russell ended up having more rings. But look, I don't you try and look at what he's doing. 60 points, 26 rebounds. He's having 50 points, he's having 51 points, he's having 36 points. When you look at what he's doing and you look at his trajectory, maybe but I highly doubt it. I think at the end of the day, in the next 50 years, Will Chamberlain will be more remembered than Luka Doncic. Well, I mean, talking about the NBA there, where a lot of games were played, not forgetting LeBron James and also all the other teams that actually participated. But good one for the likes of Brooklyn Nets. Really, this season, they've been fantastic. You can't take it away from Boston, Celtic also, despite the fact that uh, last season they got to the final before they lost out to Golden State Warriors. They are still fighting hard. But for Brooklyn Nets this season, really, they've really done well and they deserve the accolades they are getting from across the globe. And really, we continue to bring you more concerning, more uh, results and also performances from different players applying their trade in the NBA. A lot of Nigerians are there, and really, they've been doing it for their several clubs. But the main thing right now is that our own basketball in Nigeria needs to get back to its feet. We need to get it back because, uh, according to Ejike Boaja, who was here sometimes back, saying, well, you just have to delete that word greed. If the officials of NBA, that's MBBF, or anything that has to do with basketball in Nigeria can delete greed, our basketball will go places, and we also need to look into the grassroots sport development of basketball. Now, we move away from the Duncan Slam sport. Let's go EPA now, Premier League. Well, a team that never worked alone actually worked alone yesterday. They worked alone, starting from Konate's uh, own goal and also adding more to it, making it 3-1. How, how, what happened that they actually went to sleep? They work alone. They couldn't do it well. That's uh, Liverpool work alone against Brentford. Brentford really showed class against Liverpool at the G-Tech Stadium. It was a match. A lot of people were tipping Liverpool to win, but really, they went to sleep. Okay, so um, before this match started, one of the most interesting and mouth watering things to come out of this match was a lot of people were anticipating the Ivan Tony versus Virgil van Dijk matchup, but it never really happened because Ivan Tony did not play. And for them to get three goals, and when I was watching the match, it was really interesting because they were three, they had scored two goals that were ruled out for offside and they were ruled out for illegal or illegible to be a goal. But what really shocked me was the lack of creativity in this Liverpool side. Mm. It has to be Salah all the time. And we know how responsible Salah is for this team. He creates goals, he scores goals. But it's always Salah. So when you notify the threat of Salah, then they are very, they are put in a position where they have very limited options. And I'm looking at this team in midfield. Nothing is happening. The transition from midfield to attack is now too slow. Trent Alexander Arnold is not as good as it used to be when we're talking about efficiency and putting crosses in. And the person responsible for being clinical, the person responsible for being lethal and potent, that when Nunes is up on your screen now, he has been abysmal. I don't know whether it's an issue of confidence, but you could see that Jovan Klopp said there were similarities between him and Lewandowski. Lewandowski right now is one of the greatest strikers the game has ever seen. Are we going to see Darwin Nunes actually morph into that one day? I don't think that's possible because his finishing <coughs> is awful. When you look at it, he's not even hitting the target. He's, <laughs> he's throwing away very, very easy chances. So I really don't know what's the next step for Jurgen Klopp because I've been saying it's a confidence issue, it's a mentality issue. They had the break of the World Cup. Most of their players did not go to the World Cup or did not start at the World Cup. So they are well-rested. Fatigue is not a problem. 
but they can't close out games. So they need to, to really look at that. The last game, they had two own goals from the opposing team. <laughs> they are not scoring goals, they are not creating chances, they are only pressing. So yeah, it's a very, very big problem for Jurgen Klopp now. A big problem for Liverpool from what happened between them and Brentford. Now, let's look at Brentford's performance against the big boys big boy this season so far. They've really done well when it comes to Brentford. They were uh, uh, fantastic against Liverpool, against uh, Chelsea. They played draw against Arsenal. Arsenal defeated them 3 0, but they walloped Manchester United 1 2 3 4. Brentford against Liverpool 3 1. Against Tottenham All Sport, it ended 2 2. Manchester City, they pipped them 2 1. And really, Brentford have done well so far this season. They've been able to up their game against the big boys. And now let's look at the way the table is standing in the EPL. Now, data 18, that is. Uh, uh, Premier League with 18 table. Arsenal, yes, still there, but we are just uh, focusing on Liverpool and Brentford. That win yesterday has brought uh, Brentford to seventh position. You have 26 points, just two points adrift Liverpool, who are right now, uh, they have, uh, uh, from the way it is, Liverpool, yes, they have the chance to steal up their game, but they have 28 points. Uh, Brentford, they have 26 points. And you look at Liverpool just have to, in fact, if they are to be among the top four, they need to work harder. Okay, so I'm looking at this table. So what I believe will happen at the end of the season is that I feel Newcastle are going to drop out of the top six. I feel Brentford will end up finishing ninth. Because I see realistically, I still, um, first position is Arsenal or Man City. Third is going to be, I think, Manchester United or Liverpool. They will have a scuffle between third and fourth. Fifth, we are going to have Tottenham. Sixth, probably Chelsea. So Newcastle, for me, will end up probably seventh. We have Brentford in eighth. But looking at the table, this, this has been one of probably the most interesting seasons we've ever had. Because obviously, Arsenal have managed to use up Man City as a number one. Newcastle, they are a dark horse and an imagined force. Then look at Man United and Tottenham scuffling it for the fourth or fifth position. But you have to give kudos to the Brentford side. And what's really intriguing and fascinating when Brentford plays that, they are not looking to sit back against these teams. Against Tottenham, they went for the juggler. Against Manchester United, they went for the juggler. Against Man City, they tried to outplay them in certain circumstances. So honestly, you have to say that what Brentford are doing is absolutely incredible and they deserve all the plaudits. The way Nigerians will say it, give them their accolades. Seriously, Brentford, they've been fantastic so far. Playing a three matches, 26 points standing seventh on the log, surprising almost everyone. And really, the B teams, Brentford and Brighton, among the top ten, no one saw that coming at the beginning of the season. If we flip to the 11 to 20 on the position of EPA right now, Crystal Palace, Aston Villa, Leicester, Leeds United, Bournemouth out are all there. But from 16 to 20, you have Everton, West Ham United, Nottingham Forest, Wolverhampton, and you have Southampton, who could actually, from the way it is, they need to work hard. All the team from 10, 11 to 20, anyone can see go down. They just have to work harder. Now let's transfer <coughs> straight to French League One. Matches were also played. Let's look at the result of uh, French League One quickly. As we talk about uh, French League One, where Strasbourg they actually lost against Troyes 2-3. Three, two, three. You have Lille against Reims, 1-0 draw there. Montpellier against Marcel ended 2-1 in favor of Marcel, the visiting team. And you have Reims defeating OGC Nice by two goals to one. Looking at those goals there, and quickly if you transfer it to the table, the way the table is standing right now, uh, you have PSG, yes, they are still there as number one. Despite losing their match over the weekend, you have Learns, they lost against Learns there. They are second on the log. But from the middle of the park, Marcel are now standing tall after winning that game 2-1. They have 36 points from 17 matches. Reigns are standing fourth. Monaco in that pecking order. Lorient, you have uh, that's uh, Remofi's uh, team, uh, the Nigerian striker. Uh, they have uh, 31 points from 17 matches. Lille are standing seventh. Lyon, Clermont, and Reims in that order. And if you flip it to the 11 to 20, you have OGC Nice, who actually played their game also yesterday. You have Tulu, Troyes, Montpellier that lost against Marcel, and now standing 14 with 17 points after playing 17 matches with a minus four uh, goal difference. You have Nantes, minus eight there with 17 points. That's the most Simon's team. Ayasio, Brace, Observe, Strasbourg, and Ingers in that picking on the order right now. Uh, it, it seems. Uh, uh, PSG, <coughs> despite losing that game, they are still top. Um, it's always interesting looking at the battle for second position in this league because mm. it's almost as a formality that PSG will probably go on to win the league. But I love the fact that PSG, they looked very disjointed when they played against Lens. You could see that they had Rak um, Hakimi at left back. We know he's a right back. You could see that Umpapi had to carry the team, carry the load on his shoulder. And one thing about Umpapi is that he's a clinical finisher. When it comes to creativity and setting up for his... Um, 
um, teammates. He's not as lethal as Neymar and Messi. So they'll probably need Neymar and Messi to come back. I think the gap will definitely become bigger as the season progresses, as the season goes on. But all due respect to Lens for actually taking the fight to PSG, not relenting, not sitting back, going in with a belief that they could actually beat PSG. And they beat PSG convincingly 3-1. Magnificent result for them. But I do believe that the most interesting thing will probably Lens or Marcel, who finishes second, because I believe PSG will top the group. The fight will be very tough between PSG up to Monaco, because right now, in fact, even to Lille, they will still be hoping that they can do it from 30 to 44. 14 points are drift for Lens, 40 point, four points between them and PSG, the league leader. And you have Marcel 36, Reigns 34, and Monaco 33. So a big fight there between the big boys who are ready to turn things around over there at the French League One. Giving you updates concerning how the table is standing in French League One and also the EPL, while we talk about the NBA earlier on. Now, let's talk about the man that has turned things around for a particular country. Well, Saudi Arabia are naturally right now. They've actually signed Ronaldo. That's not the news anymore. But their Instagram page has actually moved from 800,000 to 6 million after not up to a week that they signed him right now. Good one. And as we hit 6 million followers, more than Europe's elite teams of Sevilla, Valencia, Roma, Napoli, Aston Villa, and Everton. If you look at all these clubs, they are elite teams and really they ought to have more followers. But right now, Al Nasri has actually upstaked them on Instagram because of the effect of Cristiano Ronaldo. Right now, from 800 to 6 million. Um, so first of all, you look at Cristiano Ronaldo, definitely one of the most box office individuals we have throughout sports, throughout pop culture. And this is what people really do not understand about this signing. You do not go out and give Cristiano Ronaldo $200 million per year, $125 million pounds per year, if he's not generating twice as much or twice as much. Look at when he went to the Serie A, and we had Agnelli, who was the CEO of Juventus at that time, saying that all Serie A teams should thank Ronaldo because he has probably bought 10 million euros to their net earnings for the year. So because of he brought so much recognition to um, Serie A. But the question now with Al Nasir, and for me, a Ronaldo fan, is how exactly do we get access to watch his matches, what 90 minutes of him. We know that the career is done and dusted. Nobody really cares what happens in our NSL. But this guy is box office and it's unassailable. Everywhere he goes, he's marketable. He sells jerseys, he sells kits, he sells merchandise. That's who Cristiano Ronaldo is. That's who he has always been. And probably moving forward, Cristiano Ronaldo will still sell merchandise in his 50s, in his 60s. That's how marketable and box office this guy is. It's unquestionable that what this man has done for our the recognition he'll bring to the league, the revenue knew he's going to generate for the league. Every single thing that he touches for this league will be on a positive note. On the sporting side, it might not work as well as they would have expected or as well as they would have wanted. But when you look at things that happen at the head office, when you look at their financial statements and revenues, Cristiano Ronaldo is going to change the trajectory of this team. And it's that simple. It's that simple. Talking about Anash right now, they beat six million on Instagram, and really, it will be growing from on all other social media platform. Really, you have the effect of Ronaldo there. Ronaldo will be staying with them for two years as a footballer, and same uh, extra five years as an ambassadorial role that he will be playing. And aside that, we still have one more story before we wrap it up. Cristiano Ronaldo could join Newcastle United on loan if they qualify for Champions League this season. How did that come to be? Well, according to the news, uh, well, the owner, Saudi backed team, they are the owner of uh, Newcastle, and that particular clause has been imputed in that contract of Cristiano Ronaldo. If Newcastle qualified for Champions League, it could be on loan to that particular club. After all, Newcastle is being backed by uh, Saudi Arabia. I just feel this deal is unnecessary. I'm a Cristiano Ronaldo fan. I'm probably one of his biggest fans. But when you've come out of Europe, just stay out of Europe. And mm -hmm. people are bringing similarities and comparisons that since that time, Ibrahim will return to the MLS for two years and came back. But the MLS is being played at a much higher level than what is being played at the Arabian League. So I just feel, OK, there's a clause in his contract to go to Newcastle. Would Newcastle really want him? Will he be able to keep up with the pace, the pressing, the intensity of maybe the Premier League coming or the Champions maybe. League? Maybe he can be a fringe player. Yes. But that's Cristiano Ronaldo changing his mentality. Cristiano Ronaldo has never been known to be somebody that accepts a role, a subdued role on the bench as a fringe player. So I'm just looking at this deal. It's unnecessary. It's unwarranted. It's uncalled for. Cristiano Ronaldo has gone out of Europe. He should just stay in Al Nasser till he's 40, end his career to what has been a glamorous and incredible career. He doesn't need to come back to Newcastle. He doesn't need to come back to the Champions League. If he wanted to stay in Champions League, 
think he should have accepted the role of probably £70,000, £80,000 at a small Champions League club and continue his run in Champions League. He's taking deal at NSF. He should just stay there and finish his career. Maybe to some extent, business-wise, if he comes to Newcastle, they will make more money too, even though as a fringe player. And also, uh, a lot of things here and there. You know, when it comes to uh, contract signing, by the time you check the clauses out, you see whether, okay, if you come in uh, because of the endorsement, this and that, they will consider so many things. Maybe if we just come in uh, to uh, play fringe-wise, uh, as just as mentioned concerning Ronaldo there. Ronaldo going back to Newcastle, that is if they qualify for Champions League because they are being by by Saudi. And right now, Ronaldo is having a feel of the day over there at the Arabia because of the fact that he has joined them 200 million euros per year and he will be there for seven years or do as a footballer for two years and five years as ambassador. Good one for Cristiano and right now he will be earning the highest salary in the world of soccer, the world of football for himself and also for Al Nasri, they've really hit the jackpot because a lot of fans are really going after them either on social media even going for the jersey of Ronaldo are really catching out that right now as they are making a lot of money because of the fact that they could see that they could use Ronaldo to make money and also make their name to be more popular. Right now, a lot of people want to see Saudi Arabian League on TV just because he has moved there. A lot of this we've just mentioned while we're talking on 360 Sport, but for Pelé, the man that turned around the history of football as he became a king named after football for what he has done so far, he will be buried today and we just hope that his soul continues to rest in perfect peace and hopefully all he has done or all he did for football will continue to linger in the heart of the whole world. He has done well for himself. Edson Arantes does Nascimento. We pray that uh, he so continues to rest in perfect peace. And Suleiman Shwaibu, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to score for 360 Sports. Yes, 360 Sports, where we always want to give you details in the world of sport. Sport is always business and fitness. I am Adeni Ajishafe. Thanks for watching.